The death toll from Hurricane Irma increases and in sport, a dismal start for the West Indies in the third test against England. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Thursday, September 7th. I'll be back with the details in just a moment. I want to give the audience a context in which we are carrying on this conversation mm -hmm. to say that the, the, the trading relations with uh, Britain and by extension Europe uh, are very important within a particular context. So we're dependent on trade with everybody, right? Uh, right? But, but 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 Britain is 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 a particular kind of relationship. Expand on that a little bit for the audience. Adopting a bunny is a big responsibility. Rabbits need special food and care. People come in and wanting to buy a bunny for their child. That's not the reason to buy a bunny. It's got to be a family commitment, something that's well thought out by the whole family, and then the parents really have to be the, the sole care caretaker. I mean, the children can help too, but they, they shouldn't depend on the children to take care of the bunny, and a lot of times that's the case. The death toll from Hurricane Irma has now risen to at least 10 and the damage caused by the monster storm is running into the millions. In addition to a two-year-old who died in Barbuda yesterday, eight people died in the French Caribbean territories of St. Martin and St. Barthélemy and one life was lost in Angola. A state of emergency has been declared in Antigua's sister isle where Prime Minister Gaston Brown reported almost total devastation with about 95% of buildings damaged and 60% of residents homeless. The Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency is deploying a team to the island today. In St. Martin, an official said about 95% of the island was destroyed and there was major damage to the airport in Philipsburg. The government of France has sent emergency food and water there and to St. Barthélemy there where Irma ripped off roofs and knocked out electricity. Significant damage has also been reported in the British Virgin Islands where infrastructure, homes, businesses and supermarkets have been devastated. A state of emergency and a public health emergency have been declared in the U.S. Virgin Islands where there has been extensive damage as well. Meanwhile, Irma continues to wind its way across the Caribbean and it's heading straight for the Turks and Caicos Islands. In the latest advisory at 11 a.m., the National Hurricane Center said the eye of the hurricane was located near latitude 20.4 degrees north and longitude 69.7 degrees west, about 120 miles southeast of Grand Turk Island. Irma is moving toward the west, northwest, near 16 miles per hour. And that general motion is expected to continue with some decrease in forward speed for the next couple of days. On the forecast track, the eye of Herma should continue to move just north of the coast near Hispaniola today, be near the Turks and Caicos and southeastern Bahamas by this evening and then be near the central Bahamas by tomorrow. Maximum sustained winds remain near 180 miles per hour with higher gusts. And residents of the hurricane-ravaged Barbuda are being urged to evacuate ahead of Hurricane Jose's arrival. The Category 1 hurricane is churning a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles. Following a late-night cabinet meeting, Brown announced that the government was declaring Barbuda a disaster zone 
and as we heard earlier, implementing a state of emergency. Resources including security, medical personnel and critical supplies were mobilized and helicopters were secured for transport to the island. But the Contrington Air Strip in the island was damaged during the storm, preventing planes from landing. Boats are also challenged to find suitable mooring due to damage at the dock. Prime Minister Brown says if this other storm, Jose, is going to be a threat to Barbuda, they will have to evacuate them. You know that we are threatened now potentially by yet another storm, Hurricane Jose. Jose. And if that is the case and it's coming our way, then clearly we will have to evacuate the residents of Barbuda. In fact, I'm of the view that as it stands now, that Barbuda is barely habitable. And if we have yet another storm coming in a matter of days, we will have to make uh, special arrangements to evacuate all Barbudans and bring them over here until we can restore some level of normalcy. Meanwhile, electricity was restored to St. John's and other communities throughout Antigua. Late yesterday, the restoration of power paved the way for some sense of normalcy in the capital and early today, banks, shops and other businesses began operating with limited hours. And the latest on Hurricane uh, Jose, Hu Hurricane and Tropical Watches have been issued for the northern Leeward Islands as the intensifying system moves closer to the island chain. A hurricane watch has been issued for Antigua and Barbuda, a tropical storm watch for Angola, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Saber and St. Eustatius. Jose, which is currently carrying maximum sustained winds around 90 miles per hour, is expected to become a major hurricane by tomorrow. It is currently about 715 miles east of the Lesser Antilles and moving toward the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. The hurricane is expected to continue on this path with a slight decrease in forward speed during the next couple of days. Well, stay with us. Your mid this sport is next. Work for England to do after the break. Milan, alongside his skipper, who was closing in on A.B. de Villiers' record of 12 consecutive test matches with a half century. Oh, it's worked. The inside edge dragged onto the stumps. The change of angles worked. Root was joined by Stokes, and although the Durham batsman earned a reprieve on nine, both were soon consolidating the fifth wicket partnership. Welcome back. West Indies has had a dismal start in the third test against England at Lords. Just before tea interval, the Caribbean men were left reeling on 119 for 7 in 55 overs. Opening batsman Kieran Powell top scored with 39 from 98 balls, while Shea Hope chipped in with 29 from 57 deliveries. Medium pacer Ben Stokes was the bowler who dented West Indies' batting lineup as he captured four wickets for 22 runs. James Anderson and Tobias Jones picked up two wickets each. The West Indies will be hoping to make history in the decisive test at Lords, having already broken a 17-year winless streak in England by winning the second test at Headingley last week. The Caribbean side now find themselves on the brink of their first series victory in England in nearly three decades. And Trinidad and Tobago's bid to reach the 2018 World Cup in Russia ended in disappointment on Tuesday night when they crashed to a 3-0 defeat to Panama at the Estadio Romel Fernandez. TV6's Sergio Dufour has that story. After conceding two soft goals in the first half of their last match against Honduras, TNT were eager to prevent a repeat away to Panama. Well, the opening goal didn't come as sudden, but the home team got the opener in the 39th minute on the counter-attack. A brilliant run against an exposed defense by Gabriel Torres put Panama ahead 1-0. The visitors created chances in the first half, but they could not capitalize. TNT lost a further momentum in the second half. Marvin Phillip in for John Michael Williams, betrayed by his own defender, Kyle Mitchell, with the own goal in the 57th minute. The Panamanians never stopped coming forward, and they were rewarded with a third goal from Abdiel Arroyo in the 83rd minute. That's how the game ended. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon.